we are going to be building the Polar Express train using just shapes. So we're going to use geometric shapes, shapes that we've learned about and we know their names. So at the bottom, I'm going to start with maybe a long rectangle, standing up tall. And attached to that, I could have a square. So that's kind of starting to look like the front of the train. On the front of the train, I might have a trapezoid roof and maybe a little smoke tower. Attached to that, I might have a little line or even a skinny rectangle. And then I might have a long rectangle. And I might keep building that. So my train might not have a lot of parts. Or maybe my train is so big it goes off the paper. Like it just keeps going and going. But I can add more to that train. I'm going to do some skinny triangles for the top roofs. So I'm making my parts of my train look the same. You could have them different. Maybe some of them have trapezoids. Maybe this one has like a domed roof. I'm going to make some windows. Maybe this one has a door. Maybe this one has rows of windows. Everything I'm drawing right now is just shapes. Oh, my train is not getting anywhere though. It doesn't have any wheels. I'm going to add some circles. So usually we'd see two pairs of wheels on each part. It still looks like it's floating. I better add a train track. So I might see the front part of the train track. I might even see parts of the back where I leave a space. I could draw the tracks. So these are just lines that are kind of at a diagonal. It makes it look like the train is sitting on that track. Oh, I have lots of space at the top. I bet I could add more. Hmm. How about some big trees? Trees are tricky. I draw them with triangles. So I have a small triangle, and I'm going to overlap. That means I'm going to put one touching it, a triangle that's a little bit bigger. And I'm going to keep doing that, but I'd stop when I touch the train because the tree is behind the train. Ooh, I can't see any part of that one. And then it would, like, touch the ground. So that gets a little tricky because it's behind it. I might see mountains, so I could do some big triangles. Awesome. I have a lot of space filled up on my paper. I think I'm ready to start to color. So we are using oil pastels today, or oil crayons. The cool thing about oil pastels is they can push and cover up and be really dark on these um, black papers. So I am pushing as hard as I can. I don't want to go super fast today because then it doesn't look as neat. The harder I press, the nicer the oil crayons look. I want to show you a couple of tricks with the oil crayons. They smear. So my trick with the oil crayon is that they can smear. So if you color something and maybe add a couple lines, you can rub them and make it look like it's really shining. In some of the videos we saw, we saw some lights in the sky, the northern lights. You can get those by maybe making that curved line shape and then you can smear them. So if you want it a little bit brighter, you could make that line and really push and smear to make like the northern lights shining in the back all the way around. Gets a really cool effect. Um, we don't have gray, so lots of kids always wonder about the mountains. If you want to color those lightly with the oil crayons, you can make it look gray, and you can even smear those with your finger. When you have added color and you've pushed hard and done your very, very best work, make sure your name is on the back. Mrs. Cleary forgot that. And it can go on the pile that Mrs. Cleary is pointing to right now.